seems to me that dry eye is all around us, from TV commercials to articles and publications. It seems like everybody's talking about dry eye. And in our practice, it's no exception. We're seeing more dry eye than ever. In fact, in one study that we did in our practice, we found that 63% of our patients had inflammation. And in another study, when we looked at the entire dry eye practice, about 78% of our patients had meibomian gland dysfunction as described by having six or fewer of their meibomian glands yielding a liquid secretion. Now, if you follow me in any of the uh, articles or any of my social followings, you know that I like to talk about getting glands to go from not open to open. And in order to do that, we need to use some sort of thermal pulsation. However, for many of us, we still use some sort of warm compresses. Something like this that we utilize in our patient base in order to help us keep the glands flowing and that's how we utilize it in our office. So I thought that we could make a video to talk a little bit about warm compresses and how we can best use them for our patients. So as I stated before, meibomian glands that are clogged and plugged, there's nothing really that has been shown in the research to show that we can increase the flow of those glands. However, we have been able to show that lippy flow or some sort of thermal pulsation can increase the flow. In fact, this paper right here, it shows that when uh, evaluated at two and four weeks post lippy flow, that we were able to get a significant increase in the amount of oil flowing from the glands. However, when it was tested against warm compresses, there was no significant increase in the tear breakup time or in the actual flow from the meibomian glands. So the difficulty becomes what type of warm compress should we use? Because we've looked into things all the way from hard boiled eggs, all the way to fancy machines, and then things as simple as little pads, a little mask that we can put on the face. So where does warm compresses fit into the whole equation? Well, the way I see it is warm compresses are best used when the glands are already flowing and could use some help in flowing better. This study right here showed that, uh, that with, with warm compresses, it could increase the lipid layer thickness by up to 80%. And so what Olson and Korb showed us here is that if a gland is flowing and there's already oil being produced, it's a way to increase the amount of oil that is being flowed. Our good friend Carolyn Blackie Hi, Dave. taught us a couple of things with this paper is that the inner eyelid temperature, we need to get to 40 degrees Celsius in order for it to be effective for the meibomian glands. And what that means is that the outer eyelid temperature needs to be around 45 degrees Celsius. For patients who have more advanced or more severe dry eye, we want the temperature to be at 40 degrees or 45 degrees for a longer period of time. And maybe for those mild cases, they can have it at that temperature for a shorter period of time. So are all warm compresses the same? In fact, they're not. Murakami did a study that looked at that very thing. What he looked at is he looked at various different commercially available warm compresses to try to decide if there was similarities or differences with them. And something that was kind of interesting is that they evaluated and they found that only the bundle method really helped to keep the inner eyelid and the outer eyelid at those temperatures for a longer period of time. They didn't use every commercially available warm compress, but of the ones that they did, they didn't work as effective. The problem with the commercially available ones is although very, very convenient, they may not be able to maintain that high temperature long enough. The bundle method utilizes five washcloths that are then uh, wet and rolled up upon each other, then put into the microwave. When you take it out of the microwave, keeping the cap on, you then take the outer washcloth off and apply it to the eyes. Then, after two minutes, you take the next washcloth out and apply it to the eyes. And then you're going for about 10 minutes, and by that 10th minute or the 8th minute when you're putting the last washcloth on the eyes, you can tell that the patient still has a high heat, and according to the study in this graph that you see right here, the patients still have a high temperature even at the longer period of time. So the problem with the bundle method is it is very cumbersome. So what we can kind of see from this is the things that are convenient 
they tend to be maybe a little less effective, but the things that are maybe the most effective, they tend to be the least convenient. So we've looked for ways in our practice to be able to help with this conundrum. And we found that masks like this to be very, very effective at helping to solve that problem. Although maybe not perfect, which it's difficult to find something that's perfect on the convenience and the effectiveness, it stays hot for a very, very long time. And if you use a moisture liner where you get this wet, the moisture component stays hotter for a longer period of time. Now, for me and what we do and what we recommend for our patients is that after about five minutes on the eye, uh, it may be effective for, especially the more advanced dry eye patients, for them to put this back in the microwave for a couple of seconds and then put back on their eye. We don't want things to be too hot, otherwise it would burn the eye. So for advanced cases or patients who are even more severe with the, the dryness that they have, we might need something a little bit even stronger or more substantial. And for that, we go to a more substantial type of mask like this or like this one, this one being a little bit larger. And for these, they come with a couple of different methods for the heat. Uh, you can wet these and maintain the heat and heat them up, or you could use them as cool. And then these ones here, uh, you need to use uh, and, and boil them. And these tend to maintain heat for longer periods of time, longer than these do, uh, but you still may need to take them, uh, take them out and, and, and heat them up for another period of time in order to get that hot heat for those patients. The other benefit that these have for patients that may have exposure problems is when they're sleeping at night and they can't keep their eyes closed and they've got that air exposure, you can put inserts in them and have the patients wear them as sleep masks. And this certainly isn't a product endorsement for these particular products. We just find them to be very effective and that's what we use in our office. So to recap, there's a couple things to consider. Number one is if glands are open, then warm compresses are a great way to go. But if the glands are clogged or they're plugged, then we want a thermal pulsate. In order to help keep glands open, we want the outer eyelid temperatures to reach near 45 degrees Celsius and for the inner eyelids to reach about 40 degrees Celsius. For more advanced or more cumbersome patients that are really having some problems, uh, we want them to be uh, heated for a longer period of time. For most patients, we can do something like this because it's very convenient. And although the bundle method may be the most effective way to go, it's really, really bothersome. It, it, it takes a long time to do and it can be very inconvenient for patients. So this tends to be a good way to go for most patients. And if a patient needs something a little bit more advanced or has exposure problems, we can use something like this to help our patients out. So hopefully this is effective and it gives you some information uh, from my perspective about warm compresses, how we utilize them in our dry eye practice, and hopefully it brings you some value. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or you do some things different, I'd love for you to put them in the comments below and let me know. Um, and if you think that this brought you any value, I'd love for you to subscribe so you can get uh, other information in the future. Thanks a lot.